So the first thing I did was I kind of learned about the different philosophies and our family values and decided what we wanted. And then I joined all the Facebook group in our local area that fit that. And then I shared on there, like, I want to create a co-op. This is what it would look like. I gave them everything from like, we do circle time here. This is like all the details about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, anyone that's interested, let's meet and we'll have a play date and we'll talk and I'll answer all your questions and you can see if it's a good fit. So I did that and it all came together from there. We did have different families at times that left or moved. And I think that's going to happen with anything, Mm -hmm. but mainly like if you want to get that like-mindedness together, because then it's going to foster this relationship because it's a place that you can feel nourished and supported of like, okay, I'm making this choice, but a lot of people don't agree with it. And people are going to want to go back when they're feeling supported. Hi friends, it's me, Lacey Grimm again. I am excited to connect you with Vanessa who joined us in our recent homeschooling open house and she shared her wisdom and her expertise there for all the the rising homeschoolers and even old timers, I think gained a lot of wisdom from our event. And I'm really excited that we are still offering that. So if you haven't, you didn't participate when it was live, you can still participate in that at the homeschoolopenhouse.com. And it's, it's the content I think is just really out of this world. And it did exactly what we wanted it to do, which was give people confidence, help them feel like they're on the right path and that they've got this. And Vanessa was an integral part in, in making that happen. And I just want to welcome her to talk to her a little bit more and get to know what she's all about. Thank you so much for joining us today, Vanessa. I would love for you to start with just sharing uh, with us, you know, sort of your roots. Like, where have you come from? What was your educational experience? I feel like that sheds a lot of light on how people end up where they are. So yeah, just share with us a little bit about that. So I grew up mainly in Colorado, but I did live in Kansas when I was very young. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to a couple different elementary schools. And then once we moved to Colorado, I finished out elementary school, middle school and high school there, and then also went to college there. But I can't say I remember much about school (laughs) at all. (laughs) Right. Like I've tried, my husband remembers everything about his life and me not so much. (laughs) So looking back, I don't really, I can't really remember much about it. And then I do, okay, I will admit I cheated a lot in school, especially when I get (laughs) to high school because I was not interested in any of the subjects or how I was learning. And so, yeah, I probably don't have the fondest memories of schooling. Yeah, it's interesting because I think about that sometimes in school. I was just not motivated, you know, like it, there's nothing to do with intelligence. I just didn't care about the subject. So I didn't spend the time reading the books as thoroughly or making sure I knew the information because I wanted to just get by and I wasn't really into it. And so, yeah, I feel the same way. I feel uh, like I forgot a lot. And sometimes when I'm teaching my kids, I'm like, oh, this is so interesting. I wonder why they didn't teach us. And it's likely they did, but... <laughs> It was just not something I wanted to learn then. So anyway, it's really interesting. So coming from that place and then having children, what did it look like to make that homeschooling decision where you just automatically like, that's what we're going to do from the get go? Or did you go back and forth? So I actually never thought I would homeschool when I, my son was younger and friends would ask like, oh, are you going to enroll your son in this preschool that everyone's starting to do? I was like, no. And the big reason back then was we were living on a base And so the preschool, you weren't allowed to like take your own food to, and they were like their snacks for like a cinnamon roll and milk for breakfast or whatever. And so I just didn't agree with the food choices for my Mm -hmm. son. And so that's why I like didn't sign him up. And then the longer and longer we were together and moving more and learning more, because I feel like when you're in that just like breastfeeding, baby wearing stage, like I wasn't thinking about school or Mm -hmm. all these different philosophies and stuff. But then when I was in that environment and hearing more conversations about it, I was like, oh my gosh, of course I'm going to homeschool. How did my (laughs) friends know? Like, yeah, she's going to (laughs) homeschool. Yeah, that's interesting. There was a little bit of a natural transition there. I think once you start questioning one system of like thought, you start to question all of them. And then, and then you're like, well, why wouldn't I just keep my kids at home? I can teach them the alphabet and you know, like all of those little things just sort of fall into place. So yeah, that's, that's been my journey too. But then we have all these new people who are kind of like they, their final straw or their deciding factor was a little different, whether it's, you know, they don't want to do virtual school or they don't want to wear masks or whatever it might be. We're definitely in a new phase where people are like, okay, I'm going to try this thing. And, and it can be a really hard transition for folks who didn't ease into it that way. And they're kind of coming in the back door, I feel like, and it's different, right? Don't you think, do you feel that way? Do you think it's a little different? I definitely feel like with the virus and everything, all the families that have already been homeschooling, it would be kind of in a sense, like we're ahead of the game of like, oh, this is normal 
normal for us. Mm -hmm. So I can totally see this. So it can be so overwhelming because even when I was like, yeah, we're going to homeschool. And then I was like, oh my gosh, there's all these different philosophies. Yeah. So then think like, depending on what age the child is, it can be a lot. And I think the best thing to do is just revert back to simplicity, like, and start as small as possible. And realize how much natural learning can go on during the day without all these materials and plans needing to be made. Mm, Yeah, for sure. I think that's so important. It it can be. I think that was really like, like I said, with that, that open house to show how, you know, even those of us who've been homeschooling for a long time may not really be adhering to the curriculum strictly, right? We're just, we're like, that's a nice, that's a nice idea. And we can use that as a backdrop, but ultimately to be at home and schooling your children is the benefit more, more than the perfect curriculum or whatever. So yeah, that's really, really good advice. So you said you went to, to college. What did you study when you were in college? So I got a bachelor's and a master's in exercise science and health promotion. I actually graduated my bachelor's a semester early. So I did it in three and a half years because I was crazy. I took like 22 credit hours. I was doing ROTC. I joined the National Guard to pay for school. I was working part time and I was joining cross country. I never slept. (laughs) Yeah. And then I start, I graduated and then I started my master's degree like two weeks later. Wow. And then I went to like get all these certifications, a group exercise and Mm -hmm. personal training and yoga and fitness and holistic nutrition. And the funny thing is now I don't like, yeah, they were amazing for my family and they've created our values and our, how we're going to live our life. But that experience to me showed me like, I did not really enjoy college. I didn't enjoy all these things I could have because Mm -hmm. I was constantly like, I got to get to the next thing. I got to do this. And I'm like, why do I think this way? So really for me in homeschooling, my whole goal has been to use it as an opportunity to slow down. Like Mm -hmm. we're not in a hurry and we really, we do the Waldorf philosophy and delayed academics. So it's like, I'm in no rush for my son to meet any certain standard or I just want him to actually like love it and that Mm -hmm. love of learning continue on. It's, it's really interesting because I think um, in our pass or fail kind of society, we really push people and gear them towards college. And I was much the same. And I ended up, you know, at 17 going to college because it was just the automatic next step. And I think one of the things that's going to be a result of what's going on in the world right now is people are questioning like, well, maybe that's not the right next step right now. Maybe virtual college doesn't make sense. Maybe I'll just take a year off and like explore what my actual interests are. And I think that that ultimately is what draws me to homeschooling is that we can on a, on a dime change what we're going to learn about in a day because a child has sparked interest in something different than I had planned, right? And there's just this liberation sort of from that structure that you were talking about. Now, you mentioned the Waldorf philosophy, which is something that is I love, and we've implemented a lot of that with our children, especially in those younger ages. Would you kind of give a brief overview of what that means? Because I think for some people, Waldorf is like, I mean, I know when I was introduced, I was like, what are you talking? I've never heard of that before ever. So yeah, please share a little bit about what Waldorf looks like. So I actually first learned about it through, I was listening to a podcast because I'm really into like minimalism and simplicity. Mm -hmm. And it was saying like, if that's your thing, the best way to teach your kid is through Waldorf. And I had not heard that either. And so I like started researching all this stuff about it. And the thing that really drew me to it is it starts out so magical. And it's like, you know, like learning the letters through fairy tales and Mm. practicing math through these little gnomes and gyms. And to me, it all just felt like I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to start back over. And I go to kindergarten and do this. And then really it showed how it just fosters this whole like mind, body, soul learning and hands, Mm. heart and head. And it's all so connected instead of like, here's your textbook and this is what we're going to do. Like they don't even have textbooks. They create their own through their main lesson books. And so, I mean, I did have to like search some YouTube videos and show my Mm. husband what it was because he was like um what are we doing (laughs) yeah (laughs) I think it's interesting because I do see a lot of people and I was the same way when we first started with homeschool we created this like homeschool space with a desk and a chalkboard and and just a very kind of structured almost bringing the school classroom into our home which is you know there's nothing wrong with that and it can be beautiful if you let it be beautiful but I think some of the the advice that when you're talking it makes me think of is kind of just turning your home into the classroom and letting the home life itself be the classroom and I think in a Waldorf school that's really what they do instead of having a formal classroom they really try to replicate the home environment and give kids things and chores and you know tasks things that are homey to to teach with and to show them you know responsibility and you know maybe they'll learn the letters by molding in bread that they're making for 
a snack or whatever. And I think that sometimes just, I, I see a lot of people changing rooms into homeschool rooms now. And I know that I've gone through that process. And I think I just wanted to mention that, yeah, in the Waldorf philosophy, it's really more about, you know, making school a piece of the, the normal home life. Yeah. We don't have a class. We don't have like a classroom set up. We don't have a desk. We mm -hmm. use we use our kitchen table if we really need like a writing surface, but right. I have, I guess I do have a chalkboard, but I do the blackboard, mm -hmm. chalkboard drawings. And so it's just showing like what we're doing that week or our letters, which that's a whole thing in itself for a parent journey of learning to draw on a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. But we use like our backyard or we'll go to the park or we really like use every space as a learning opportunity. Mm. And I think for a lot of kids, that makes a big difference in their ability to absorb because you know sitting in that structured classroom I remember just being so distracted by you know things going outside the room and the windows and anybody anytime anybody walked into the room everybody's attention goes to that and, and so yeah I mean giving kids an opportunity to sit in a new environment and absorb in a new way I think is really huge. I think one of the things I could share with other families that are starting off like if you really feel like your child is frustrated and not into it like I like changing up the environment because like our thing that's usually a struggle is math. So mm. I'll be like, okay, go like clean up your toys you're playing with or whatever. And then meet me like in our reading area. And I'll have set up like a little store that we're going to practice mm. like money and math and stuff. And like, it's amazing how like Kai's so excited. And he's like, yes, I love doing this. And Aww. so it kind of just shifts that, that you're, I'm like, we're still doing math, but just <laughs> in a way that you're enjoying it a bit more. It feels like play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so one of the things that you actually shared a good bit about in, in our live call for sure was about co-ops and developing sort of a co-op for your children and for your community that kind of meets your own needs. And I've gotten that question a lot. Like, what would your first steps be in creating a co-op or in just kind of cooperatively working with other homeschoolers? So I would love for you to kind of hit on that a little bit and help our listeners understand what that can look like, how easy it can be, how complicated it can be, and what you found to work best for you. So the first thing I did was I kind of learned about the different philosophies and our family values and decided what we wanted. And then I joined all the Facebook groups in our local area that fit that. And then I shared on there, like, I want to create a co-op. This is what it would look like. I gave them everything from like, we do circle time here. This is like all the details about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, anyone that's interested, let's meet and we'll have a play date and we'll talk and I'll answer all your questions and you can see if it's a good fit. So I did that and it all came together from there. We did have different families at times that left or moved and I think that's going to happen with anything. Mm -hmm. But mainly, like, if you want to get that like-mindedness together because then it's going to foster this relationship because it's a place that you can feel nourished and supported of like, okay, I'm making this choice, but a lot of people don't agree with it. And people are going to want to go back when they're feeling supported. And especially it's nice if your kids are around other kids that are living a like-minded life, mm -hmm. because then your kid just feels like, oh yeah, like my friend Everett doesn't watch TV all the time either. Like he right. likes to climb trees too. And so I think the biggest thing that intimidates people is the work it takes in the beginning. But really, once you have the families and you just come up with your vision as a group, it's pretty easy to be like, hey, Molly, can you do this? Hey, Rebecca, can you do this? And since I only have one child, I led two years of Forest Friday on my own doing everything. And I led one year of doing a Waldorf in the woods doing everything. Mm -hmm. And then I started asking for help. I did it that way because I'm kind of stubborn and I just leadership to me is easy. And I'm like, I'm going to make this happen. The less people we have trying to figure it out, like the easier, but I also loved it. Like I looked so forward to planning and making it happen. And then that vision was there. And so it was easy then to be like, Hey, Kristen, can you lead this month? Mm -hmm. Hey, Karen, can you lead this month? Yeah, that's beautiful. So one of the things that sounds a little complicated to me in that situation is creating a plan of like what to even do. And I know that you've created a resource specifically with the Waldorf philosophy as the sort of framework for someone to use in making a co-op situation happen, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? So it is Waldorf-ish and a lot of mindfulness. I've tried to make it more like nature-based. So that way to anyone, like anyone that values nature could go and do it. And they don't have to know Waldorf. They don't have to do anything Waldorf. But I basically put the three years of leading co-ops into a 78 page document. And in the beginning, it tells you everything you need to know of how to run a Facebook group, 
how to deal with difficult situations that may come up to then there's a plan for every month. So there's all the stuff I did there, even including like a book list from the library. So I may, tried to make it where I could literally be like, here you go, Lacey, just <laughs> read it and run with it. Apply. Um, yeah. I love that. That's so practical. Yeah. There's so many blogs and there's so, I mean, I spent hours and hours mm -hmm. over those years, you know, like looking for different ideas and different songs and all this. So I just wanted to give something, give, be able to give someone something that had it all done. They just had to implement it. That sounds so much easier because I agree. There is, there is, you know, I think this day and age we're worried about finding the perfect thing. And I think half of that is because there's so many great things out there. So many great things. It can be overwhelming. And as a mom, I can feel like a total failure. I mean, Pinterest alone, right. Can make me feel like a failure. But when you have something kind of ironed out, laid out and just there before you, you don't have to get distracted with all, all of the great things. Just the one great thing is enough. So I think that's wonderful. How can people find that resource? I have it on Etsy. My Etsy is called Earth and Kai because my son's name's Kai. But and I also have the link on my Instagram that it's Vanessa's Holistic Living. And it too, the nice thing about the guide is it's so it kind of just gives you this groundwork, and then you could get it and be like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. But you can easily shift it. Mm -hmm. You can even make it work for. I've always had a mixed age group of kids, but you can also totally make it adapt to like preschool to high school to like, it's basically just the foundation of the natural flow of the year. Hmm. I like that. So kind of following the seasons and all those kinds of things. Nice. Okay. So I have um, another question is just what would be something outside of that, that was maybe your like number one go-to resource that you'd like to share with folks, whether it was a blog or, you know, a game or I don't know, anything that you just have turned to a lot over and over again. So one of my favorite things about our co-op was always storytelling. Um, I use the little props and I tell the stories and it's amazing how my son remembers them all because it's so different than holding a book. Mm. So one of the books I really love is a kid's herbology book and it has a story for everything. So like we took chamomile out to the forest and my camping stove and we made chamomile tea and I told the story about how chamomile came to be and so that's a great reference because it also has like different activities you can do for each herb with a story and then teaching the kids how to make your own ginger compress if you're sore. And so it's got a lot of, I have that book. I need to pull that book out. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. That's awesome. Okay. You've already given some really great tips, but if there's anything else, any like one last thing you'd like to share with the, the especially the newer homeschoolers, but any homeschooler who's feeling a lack of confidence, what would you share with them? I think it's just, we live in a world where there's so much information and when you're making such a big shift in your life, I can see where you want to be prepared and you want to feel like you know it all. And I think the best way to approach it is to just go as slow as possible. And when you're really feeling overwhelmed, just like maybe I have too much information because mm. usually that's the case that there's like too many things we're trying to do or too many curriculums or too many resources that like with Pinterest I honestly don't even have Pinterest because mm. I would just be pinning stuff all day and there'd be boards everywhere instead of actually going and doing it and it's amazing if you just keep it as simple as giving a kid natural materials they find in the forest in this yeah. mud kitchen and all of a sudden it's potions class and all these cool things that they do on their own and usually that's what they're more interested in anyways yeah for sure the natural learning just happens when we give them space to do it and instead of trying to calculate every last thing all right well Vanessa thank you so so much for being on the call with us I think that there's tons of little nuggets in here and it's it's just I feel more confident talking to you so, so uh, I really really appreciate you jumping on and folks just connect with Vanessa and get more of these great tips from her and her very calming and just soothing nature I think it's oozing through the screen and and it does anytime she talks so so take some take some notes and apply them. And thanks for joining us today. Everyone have a really great one.